With so many things for dogs and dog owners to do in the Twin Cities, you got to wonder, what are those cats doing with their alone time? Well, according to cat lover and feng shui expert and Minneapolis-based author, mm -hmm. Carol Hyder, you say that the cats are busy balancing their chi and helping to maintain a happy home. Forget the dogs. That's what they're saying, right? <laughs> That's right. <laughs> well, Jill, you know, for a couple of years, I realized, I started to observe the fact that every consultation I went on, people had a cat or more than one. When they you were had, consulting for feng shui. I, yes, and I, I got, it was weird. I mean, I, I, I would see evidence of a cat if the cat wasn't right there. A lot of times the cats would come and meet me at the door like, I'm waiting for you. And there would be little toy, to, uh, bowls out and toys, and I'd say, do you have a, if I didn't see the cat, I'd say, do you have a cat? Yeah, we have a cat. And, and I mean, it was weird, and I'd go home and I'd think, I have not been in a home without a cat for a long time. So I started taking real, uh, take track of that and, and realized that something was going on, that people who liked feng shui also liked cats. So there had to be some kind of connection there. How did you, as a feng shui expert, start to make the correlation between how felines can relate to feng shui? You know, cats are intuitive, and I think that people who have cats tend to be intuitive as well. And so they, there maybe there's just a nice match there where they, where they see an animal that really is um, very much like they are or thinks like they are. And, and they're insightful. They are they're a little mysterious. And, and so there seems to be a synergy between cat people and, and feng shui. So what can we learn from watching our cats, and how can we apply that to practice our own feng shui? Well, if, if you know your cat well enough, you can kind of observe some interesting feng shui things going on. Because if you, if you find your cat sleeping in an unusual place or hanging out in an unusual place, a place that you would go, I don't get why they would be here. It's not warm. It's not comfortable. But they're, they're sleeping here. Or they're in a chair that you never sit in. It's a little uncomfortable. Sometimes it's the cat trying to draw your attention to an area, an area that maybe needs to be cleaned out, an area that maybe you want, they want you to sit in, an area that when you go sit in the chair and you look, you realize, wow, I look this way, I don't usually sit here, and I see that, you know, the wall needs painting, or, you know, the corner looks mm -hmm. bad, or, you know, just something. Um, sometimes, however, if you know your cat and they're sleeping in a warm spot and on the bed, they're just sleeping in a nice place, that's all. And, and a lot of times they will find a place where you do end up, like I have a cat that sleeps in my office chair all, all the time. And I have to share the chair a lot of times because she's in there most of the time. And I just attribute that to the fact that she just likes being there. My cat always follows the one spot of sunshine in the room throughout the day. Now, is that anything to do with feng shui? You know, following the flow of the, of the, of the earth turning. The, and, and it's warm. You know, bottom line, it's just a warm little spot. Yeah. Let's uh, just show everybody your books a little bit. You have Wind and Water, mm -hmm. and with, what is this book about? This is the first book that I wrote, and this is a book that is an, a very simple explanation of feng shui, its principles. It's, it's almost like a little day-by-day -day book, so you could just read a little snippet and close it, and so it's not necessarily in any particular order. There are certainly some things in there about pets and about their influence in a, in a space. My second book is a book called Living Feng Shui, and this is a book of stories. So these are clients that I've worked with, and they uh, were gracious enough to let me use a, a blueprint and tell their story about why I was there, what happened as a result of our visit, and uh, there are some very touching. And the DVD? The DVD is called The Science of Feng Shui, and that actually explains why this would work from a scientific basis. Why would this work at all? This is a presentation that I did, and, and the second half of it shows us moving furniture on stage. You know, we have a bedroom set up, and it looks like it's okay until we start moving. And people can kind of palpably feel like, oh, yeah, that feels better. Oh, yeah, it feels better. Oh, yeah, I like that. So We need to do that in hotel rooms. Oh, <laughs> uh, don't we, though? <laughs> the hotel do you know, in way. Minnesota, there is a hotel, a B&B, that will rent you a cat. Oh. You check in, and they'll say, do you want a cat? And uh, you pick your cat. You That's know. really a cute Isn't idea. Is that like darling? Really, yeah, yeah, absolutely. Mm -hmm. Carol Heider, thank you so much for explaining to us how our cats can help us find our own inner feng shui. It's all about keeping the balance, the chi, the zen. <sighs> we can all use more of that, right? Absolutely. <laughs> okay, thank you so much. Mm -hmm.